What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the final mock draft of this year's offseason. Today is draft day. The draft officially starts in about seven hours from now, and we will be streaming the draft live right here on this channel. I've been up all night long working on graphics. I have a really special graphics package for you guys for that live stream. We will live stream every single pick, talk about every pick, and focus on any trades that happen and that sort of thing. So hopefully you're able to join us tonight. Now, I'm going to do this through in one recording, so it might get rough. As I said, I've been up all night, and I don't really have time to edit. Still got to finish up some graphics for that stream. So uh, one take recording for an entire mock draft i'll see how well i can do this is going to be a challenge anyway hopefully you guys have been enjoying the draft content and uh i'm just excited for the draft being here let's not waste any more time other than subscribe like hit that bell all that good stuff let's jump into it number one is supposedly jabari smith uh i fully expect Jar jabari smith to go number one i was hoping for chet holmgren to pair with my guy jalen suggs that gonzaga connection they played together in high school i didn't want chet holmgren who's you know my favorite player in this draft class to end up on a western conference rival but sounds like that's going to happen uh jabari smith number one to orlando he can shoot uh i think that they maybe look off look to move off Mo Bamba. He's a restricted free agent. So Jabari Smith, Wendell Carter Jr. front court is definitely intriguing um, and a good, uh, I mean, you can't really go wrong here if you're Orlando, if you go with Jabari, Chet, or Paulo Bancaro, in my opinion. Two is supposedly Chet Holmgren. Um, this is supposedly set in stone according to Adrian Wojnarowski. So Chet pairs with uh, Poku long-term, I guess. I don't really know who the other big man's going to be. That's a pretty skinny front court, but very skilled and lengthy. So um, Chet, I think, is the best player in this draft class. I have number one on my big board, um, but it is very close between these top three. And at three, you have Houston. I think um, if there's a shakeup in the top two and Bancaro goes somewhere else, then I think Houston just takes one of Chet, Jabari, and Bancaro. They traded away Christian Wood in order to clear space for Paulo Bancaro or one of those other two guys at the power forward position next to Alperen Shangun, who's going to be the starting center next year, I believe. Uh, and then you got Usman Garuba, first round pick from last year as a forward as well. And Houston has two more picks left in this first round at 17 and 26. They may look to package those moves up, move up. I don't know. But the draft kind of starts here at four with the Sacramento Kings. Of course, it starts with the Kings. Um, who knows what the Kings are going to do? Apparently, they're trying to trade for John Collins, and there's a decent chance that that happens today because the John Collins, DeJounte, Ru uh, DeJounte Murray rumors um, sounded like they were legitimate, but that trade fell through and that trade's not going to happen, and it sounded like Sacramento was close to trading for John Collins. Who knows if that somehow involves a fourth pick? I think that's a bit rich, um, but right now it said that they're leaning Keegan Murray, which I think would be a mistake here at four, but this mock is based on what I think each team will do and based on some of the intel that we're hearing. Keegan Murray here at four is Sacramento. I, Keegan Murray makes less sense if they trade for John Collins. Um, so if they trade for John Collins, I, I still feel like it's going to be Jay Nivey, but we've heard a lot of Keegan Murray to Sacramento stuff, and that would just be a very Kings-ish pick. At five, if Detroit is able to get Jaden Ivey, they take him and they run for the hills. Really good backcourt pairing next to Cade Cunningham. Uh, that's a very electric and fun backcourt. Um, would provide a lot, of, a lot of entertainment value in Detroit, who just traded away Jeremy Grant to the Portland Trailblazers in a good trade for Portland. Uh, my Portland Trailblazers finally did something good. Anyway, um, I think Detroit Detroit, uh, if Jaden Ivey gets taken at four, I feel like they'll go Keegan Murray, but there's rumors that they're interested in Benedict Matherin at five, so uh, that could be a surprise pick there, uh, potentially, because it's looked at like Keegan Murray, Jaden Ivey are going to go four and five, but um, if Jaden Ivey goes four, you could see a surprise pick here. If Keegan Murray goes four, I think this is easily Jaden Ivey. At six... The Indiana Pacers select Benedict Matherin, the wing out of Arizona. I think Matherin is going to go in the top seven. I don't think he's going to fall to New Orleans, New Orleans at eight. His stock has risen a little bit ahead of guys in a similar tier in the past week or so. Uh, I don't have him this high on my board, uh, but I mean, he's a dude that can shoot the ball and uh, has some defense potential and some playmaking potential and is athletic. That's a pretty good combination. At seven, my 
Portland Trailblazers could be trading this pick for OG Ananobi. That's who they're going after, supposedly. They could trade it down to OKC for 12, Lou Dort, some sort of package. But if not, uh, apparently they've given Shaden Sharp a promise. Now, Shane Sharp worked out for the Portland Trailblazers and then immediately canceled his upcoming workout with the New Orleans Pelicans, which is the pick behind Portland at eight. So it sounds like this is the floor for Shane Sharp, that there is some sort of promise here either with Portland or Portland's going to trade this pick to a team that will take Shane Sharp here at seven. So Sharp number seven to Portland or whoever ends up with this pick at eight the New Orleans Pelicans select Dyson Daniels the point forward out of Australia and the G League Ignite this is the favored landing spot for Dyson Daniels and I think he would have a chance at starting right away in a backcourt next to CJ McCollum is a really good defensive player who could help CJ McCollum out with some of the playmaking duties CJ McCollum's always been a starting shooting guard now he's a starting point guard in New Orleans so Dyson Daniels number eight good defensive player really well-rounded really high floor in my opinion and a sneakier ceiling than than people think uh in my opinion at nine san antonio selects ushman jang this is what i had in my very first mock draft and it was looked at as a little bit high then now it sounds like this is a landing spot and he could even go a little bit higher he might go to new orleans at eight is the rumor right now but ushman jang at nine makes a ton of sense for san antonio as a forward with a lot of upside uh and i just like this pick for san antonio i've talked about it in multiple previous mock drafts if you want to watch back any of my mock drafts feel free i, I won't complain at 10 the washington wizards Wizards could be trading this pick for maybe Malcolm Brogdon or trading down to 21. Apparently, they want Monte Morris from the Nuggets, uh, which would kind of be bad for Washington, but um this pick might be on the move if not uh johnny davis i think makes some sense for them apparently that's who they like right now i think johnny davis would be the best player on the board and washington's roster is kind of a mess so just going for the best value would make a lot of sense johnny davis a guy that can defend and has some go-to scoring upside likes the mid-range shot 11 new york is very happy as they get aj griffin supposedly they are in love with aj griffin they're hoping he falls to 11 and he would give them the shooter that they are looking for and uh could start at the three right away move rj barrett down to the two you got randall at the four maybe they trade him and start obi Toppin. who knows uh but aj griffin makes a lot of sense to new york and that's the guy that they are targeting at 12 okay c selects Jeremy Sohan, the forward out of Baylor. If Portland trades down from 7 to 12, which was the earlier trade I talked about, I think Portland would take Jeremy Sohan here. If OKC stays here, it sounds like they are also interested in Jeremy Sohan and would take Sohan here at 12 um, and just stock up on defense, taking Chet Holmgren at 2 and Jeremy Sohan at 12. That's probably the best two defenders in this draft class, uh, the best rim protector and maybe the best perimeter defender and the most versatile perimeter defender at that. So Jeremy Sohan, 12 to OKC. 13, Charlotte goes Jalen Duran, who falls to 13, and I, 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 I could see Duran going much higher than this. There's just certain spots, which I don't see as landing spots, um, OKC being one of them, especially with them taking Chet it to uh, New York. If AJ Griffin's on the board, I think they take him. So I was debating Jalen Duran or Johnny Davis at 10 to Washington. Going Johnny Davis at 10 ends up with Jalen Duran falling to 13. I think Charlotte goes center. If Jalen Duran isn't on the board, I think they go Mark Williams. But with Duran on the board, they're very happy here um, to take uh, the center out of Memphis. At 14, Cleveland, Malachi Branham, the guard in-state product uh, from Ohio State, played at St. Vincent St. Mary's, uh, which is where LeBron played. And then he follows in LeBron's footsteps by getting drafted to the Cleveland Cavaliers and would go into next season probably being the Cavs' starting shooting guard. Colin Sexton is a restrictive free agent coming off a major injury and isn't the best fit in that backcourt. Branham's a better fit and could end up being a better player as well. Really good pick and roll player, so would work well with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen and whatnot. 15, Charlotte. Oshag Baji, the wing out of Kansas, coming off his national championship. I have Ogbaji lower than this on my board. I have him as a late first round target. Uh, he slipped on my board a little bit. And some of it is guys that I like more than him, guys that I've started to really like. And then some of it is just... I don't trust his playmaking or his ball handling ability at the next level, and I don't think he has much upside. High floor guy is a 3 and D guy, but upside-wise, not too fond of him. But uh, Charlotte gets a guy who likes to play in transition, which is a key for Charlotte. Um, I don't know why I have the, this headphone in. I'm not listening to anything. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Charlie likes to play in transition. Ogbaji fits that, and they need help defensively, and Ogbaji would probably help with that. 16, Atlanta goes with Blake Wesley, the guard at Notre Dame. This is the highest he's been at any mock draft because apparently, apparently, there's talks that he might go in the lottery. He's risen lately, and a lot of mock drafts still have him lower than this, but the talk is that he could surprise everybody and go higher than anybody expects, and I think uh, this is kind of a good landing spot for that. Atlanta needs a starting shooting guard of the future, in my opinion, somebody that fits next to Trey Young, and Blake Wesley would fit as a guy with a lot of defensive upside, but then uh, he's a streaky shooter, but when he's hot, he can knock down some three balls, uh, and then he has a good first step, attacks the rim uh, at an okay level. Level. So good, intriguing, high upside, long-term fit in the backcourt next to Trey Young. At 17, Houston with their second pick after taking Ben Caro. They take Tari Eason. I've had this pick in a lot of mock drafts. Good defensive player. Could potentially start at the three next to Ben Caro with the four and Sangun at the five. That would be interesting. Um, but probably comes off the bench. You got Kevin, you got Kevin Porter Jr. there uh, in Houston. At 18, Chicago takes Mark Williams. I think this is the floor for Mark Williams. Chicago could use a center. They might trade this pick for Rudy Gobert. We'll see. But uh, if Mark Williams is on the board and they don't trade this pick, I think that's who they end up taking. Mark Williams' draft value depends a lot on where Jalen Duran goes. If Jalen Duran goes before Charlotte at 13, I don't think Mark Williams falls past 13. But if Jalen Duran falls a little bit and falls to Charlotte at 13, then I could see Mark Williams uh, falling as well. Like Cleveland doesn't need any bigs at 14. Atlanta has Capella and Okongwu at 16. Houston has Sangyun at 17. So uh, Mark Williams' draft stock is dependent on Jalen Duran's. Uh, apparently, people think Mark Williams is going to be a three-point shooter at some point in his career, which would be phenomenal for him. Uh, really good rebounder, uh, rim protector, lob target, freakish measurements, nine foot nine standing reach. Mark Williams, 18 to Chicago at 19. I have the Timberwolves selecting Nikola Jovic, the Ford out of Serbia. Very high upside guy, 6'10 without shoes and can handle the ball, can pass the ball, can shoot off the dribble. Very creative offensively, has a ton of offensive upside when you look at his skill set plus his height and his length. I think he has the size to play the power forward position at the NBA level. I think that's the best position for him he's not the best uh perimeter defender he doesn't have the best lateral quickness um is okay as kind of a team guy okay on the interior not much of a rim protector but if he can add some strength i think guarding power forwards is probably the best defensive position for him and then offensively he could be a mismatch nightmare for some power forwards in the league at 20 the spurs select jalen williams the Wing out of Santa Clara with their second pick. They took Ujman Jang at nine. They could use another forward. Jalen Williams is that. Uh, they have a lot of wing players, but none of them really impressed me a whole lot. So getting a guy with upside at nine and then getting Jalen Williams, who I think has sneaky upside as well. He's a multi-year mid-major guy. Normally those are looked at as maybe more safe picks, you know, like more proven guys. Jalen Williams, I think, has sneaky upside because he can pass at a really high level for a guy that has the size to play the small forward position. He can handle the ball decently well, and he's shown that he can score from all three levels. So uh, I like this pick, 20 to San Antonio. At 21, I have the Nuggets selecting Marjan Bochamp. The wing out of the G League Ignite by way of Yakima Valley Community College, which played in the same division that I played in. Yes, I played college ball. Some of you know that. And I have heard that before, but um, yeah, you know, I'm not just a hoop head that uh, has never touched a basketball. Anyway, uh, Bochamp is a perfect fit for Denver. Really good defense player. They need a good on-ball defender, and he's maybe the best cutter in the draft. Definitely probably top three or four, and that works well off of Nikola Jokic. The knock is he doesn't shoot the ball too well, um, but I think his form is okay, and I think he could be an okay shooter. And I think he has some sneaky upside because he's shifty off the bounce uh, and has an okay handle. He just needs to make better reads as to when and how to attack the defense off the dribble. If he can develop that, he could be a steal here at 21 for Denver. If not, he's a good defensive player, which is what they need. 
At 22, the Memphis Grizzlies select Dalen Terry, the uh, versatile um, player out of Arizona. I mean, I don't even know what position to give him because he can play make, can maybe run some point guard in the league, uh, has the size to play some small ball four, can defend four positions. His shot improved throughout the season, finished at like 36%, shot the ball really well the second half of the season. Very well-rounded player. I have him higher than this on my big board. I have him as a borderline lottery pick. I think he's going to be that guy that's just like that next, super competitive defensive pest you know Draymond Green Pat Bev type guy um, that is known for that type of thing but I mean he has a lot of offensive talent as well he could end up being a steal here at Memphis who they, Memphis has a lot of depth uh, so they don't need a draft for a specific position so why not draft for a guy that could maybe play four positions anyway 23 Philadelphia has apparently offered this pick to every team in the league so who knows if they stay here um but if they do Jaden Hardy I guess makes some sense for them uh the highest upside player left on the board in my opinion was a projected borderline top five pick uh before this season I think he's slipped a little bit more than he should I have him 17th 18th on my big board um but there is a chance that he falls into the 20s and this would just be a good value pick for philadelphia they don't really have a long-term third guard behind tyrese maxey and james harden and james harden's up there in age so they would need a guy long term to step into that starting shooting guard role next to tyrese maxey and that could be Jaden hardy really phenomenal score um and uh, it makes sense as a guy that could step in and maybe be the third guard right away in philadelphia if they trade this pick i feel like uh, a lot of teams could trade into this pick to take Jaden Hardy uh, because he's a good value here. At 24, I have, I'm already showing the pick, but Jake LaRavia to the Milwaukee Bucks. LaRavia has worked out for the Bucks not once, but twice and makes sense as a 3 and D guy with some playmaking upside, a guy that can play off the ball, play off Giannis, play off of Chris Middleton. Um, but then also, you know, if they're missing Chris Middleton, which was kind of their downfall in the playoffs last year, could maybe be a guy that could provide some additional playmaking, which Milwaukee needed in the playoffs last year. He could be a guy that's ready to play right away, smart player. Um, he would make a lot of sense in Milwaukee to 24. He's just the type of guy that I could see going to a contending level team and providing some valuable minutes right away. At 20 five i have the san antonio spurs selecting ty ty washington in the guard of kentucky i i have risen ty ty washington back on my board uh watched some early season action of him when he was a projected lottery pick but then he got injured that injury slowed him down a little bit it seemed like and he struggled the second half of the season therefore his stock fell and now he's a guy that could slip to the mid 20s maybe the late 20s maybe even the second round and i think that's too far for him i have him like right around Jaden hardy on my big board like 18 19 um and and San Antonio, after taking two, a wing, a forward, they go for a guard with high upside as well. I think Tata Washington could end up being a really good starting caliber guard. Uh, has uh, the potential to be a solid defense player too. So I like him 25 to San Antonio. At 26, I have the Rockets selecting Bryce McGowan's, the wing out of Nebraska. Um, offensively, he has a lot of upside. He scores the ball in ways that are very impressive. His highlight reel is very impressive. Uh, finishes through contact really well. Gets the line uh, all the time. Shoots some impressive step back jumpers. That sort of thing. Everything else is ew to me with him. Um, defensively had some really, really bad moments last year in Nebraska. Uh, and then isn't much of a playmaker for others. Gets tunnel vision a little bit too much. Uh, but... I think Houston or a team with like multiple picks would be the type of team to gamble on his upside. Um, so with their third pick, uh, I think this is a fine pick for Houston at 26. At 27, I have the Miami Heat selecting Kennedy Chandler. This is kind of a running joke at this point. I've had Kennedy Chandler in pretty much every mock draft video go into the Heat. They need a long-term Kyle Lowry replacement. And for whatever reason, Kennedy Chandler just screams Miami Heat to me. So uh, Miami uh, taking Kennedy Chandler at 27 once again. At 28, I have the Golden State Warriors selecting EJ Liddell, the forward at Ohio State. Uh, EJ Liddell in Draymond Green as small ball four fives would be menacing. EJ, L EJ Liddell just flies around defensively, blocks a lot of shots, um, solid perimeter defender, walls guys off pretty well on drives, uh, and then he can shoot the ball and pass a little bit. Not one for self-creation, but Golden State doesn't need more self-creation. I think he would fit there perfectly and provide very valuable minutes right away um, with a late first-round pick. At 29, 
the Memphis Grizzlies select Hugo Besson, the guard out of France. I think Memphis, with their three picks and loads of depth that they already have, could go draft and stash here. But Hugo is a guy that I've started to really like the more that I've watched him as a guy that uh, can knock down some impressive shots off the dribble. Uh, I think in the NBL last year shot 36-37% if I recall correctly, uh, which isn't super impressive. It's good. It's not super impressive on the surface, but if you look at some of the shot attempts he was shooting, uh, lots of difficult three-point attempts off the dribble, contested, step back, sidesteps, and so to still knock them down at that clip was really impressive. He's also pretty quick, uh, could be a guy that could get to the rim and finish, and then also has solid vision for others, eight foot six standing reach, has some size, so really well-rounded offensive player. I don't see how he's not at least a sixth man caliber guy at some point during his career. We will see, um, but uh, I think he's a first round talent. 29 is good value for him to Memphis, and then at 30, the Denver Nuggets select Dominic Barlow, the forward out of the overtime elite, uh, a riser over the past couple of months. Denver hasn't been scared to draft unique prospects before who went, uh, you know, unorthodox routes. RJ Hampton's a guy in the past. He went to the NBL back before it was more popular. It's more popular now. Um, but Denver, after taking uh, the defensive player at 21 with Marjan Bochamp, I think could swing for some upside here at 30, and they're not afraid to do so. And Dominic Barlow would be that upside guy as a forward 6'9", solid wingspan that can handle and shoot and pass a little bit. Raw prospect, needs some work, but uh, could be a really good player down the line. Now, let's look at the second round. Patrick Bowden Jr., 31 to Indiana, the high upside guy. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Uh, injuries and just a weird season in Milwaukee uh, has made his draft stock very questionable. Um, Christian Brown, Brown, 32 to Orlando. I'm not a huge fan of his, but it sounds like that he's going to go early second at the worst. Uh, there's a chance that he goes in the 20s. Christian Coloco, I really like at 33 to Toronto. They need some center depth, in my opinion, and Coloco could play right away for them. Uh, I really like Coloco. Caleb Houston, I think, has a promise. I don't know where, but I think if he didn't have a promise, he would have went back to Michigan, so the fact that he's here in this draft makes me think he has an early second round promise. My guess would be OKC, but I have no idea. Musa Diabate is a guy that I like. 35 to Orlando. Next to Chet, he would be an intriguing fit. Max Christie, 36 to Detroit. I'm not a huge fan of his game. Sounds like he could go first round, though. Uh, so the Detroit needs more perimeter depth and better perimeter players. So even though they took a guard with Jay Nivey, uh, Max Christie makes some sense as a shooter staying in the state of Michigan as he went to Michigan State. Wendell Moore Jr., 37 to Sacramento. If Sacramento is truly trying to win now, Wendell Moore Jr. is a really good value pick there as a shooting guard, small forward type of player that can facilitate knockdown threes and defend. Young Zosa, 38 to San Antonio as a draft and stash guy, but a big who's very, very raw. Hasn't been playing basketball for all that long, only about four years, um, but is freakishly athletic for his size. Andrew Demhard, 39 to Cleveland, a good third guard that could play right away for a Cleveland team that'll be trying to make the playoffs next year. They traded out Ricky Rubio after he got hurt and then brought in Rajon Rondo to try and fill that third guard role. I think they fill that at 39 with Nemhard, who um, is a really good pick and roll player, just like Malachi Branham, who they took at 14 and would fit really well next to Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. I think this is Nemhard's floor. Parshida, 40. To Minnesota, they have three picks in the second round, 40, 48, and 50, so they could use drafts in the sash guy. Uh, New Orleans has three picks in this draft, 41, 52, and then, of course, they have eight. So Kamagate makes sense as a draft and stash. Walker Kessler, 42, to New York. I really don't like his game, but um, New York could be in the market for a center. Mitchell Robinson might walk in free agency. Other than that, you got like New Orleans, Noel, and Taj Gibson. I think New York could definitely go center here. Jalen Williams, 43 to uh, the Clippers, the best charge taker in the draft. Honestly, from day one, might be the best charge taker in the league. Like, that dude has a knack for taking charges. It's wildly impressive. Uh, 44, the Hawks take Kendall Brown, who was a projected top 10 pick at the start of this past season and has slipped here. Um, just not much of an offensive player, uh, even though he was athletically and physically uh 
advantaged at the college level, still did not assert himself really at all. So I don't see that happening at the NBA level. I don't see him being much of a scorer, but he's a guy that can cut, can pass a little bit, athletic, and can defend, and Atlanta needs defenders. Josh Minot is kind of a similar player, athletic, good defensive player, likes to run in transition. So that's kind of what Charlotte should be looking for here at 45. Uh, and then offensively, very raw. A lot of people think he has more upside than I think he does, but uh, he would make sense in Charlotte. Peyton Watson, another high upside guy whose season last year didn't really pan out. He goes 46 to Portland after they trade down from 36 to 46 as part of the Jeremy Grant trade. And Portland would be in a position to just gamble on some upside especially at a forward spot Carlo Matkovic at 47 I probably said his name wrong uh but Carlo Matkovic 47 to Memphis draft and sash guy as I said they have three picks and a lot of depth so I think they could maybe go for two draft and stash guys Orlando Robinson 48 to Minnesota really gifted offensive big man um who can shoot who can dribble who can pass if minnesota drafts him maybe they look to move off nas reed and give that backup center role to an orlando robinson who might be ready to play right away just because i think offensively he can provide some value 49 jabari walker to the Cavs, who just traded for this pick as of like 30 minutes ago as of right before i made this recording um i don't really know who they should target there i just switched it from the kings to the the calves and i had the kings taking jabari walker so i think that's good value for jabari walker at 49 50 i have the timber of selecting ryan rollins that's a steal there i have him as a borderline first round target um and just a very gifted mid-major scorer who I think could be a sixth man at some point during his NBA career. Alondis Williams, 51 to Golden State, is another guy that I really like, is maybe the best passer in the draft, uh, has the size to guard some twos, maybe some threes, good defensive player, and can attack the rim really well. If he can learn how to shoot, he's a steal and a really good pick at 51 for Golden State. Vince Williams Jr., 52 to New Orleans, a 3 and D guy who I think is underrated, can play make a little bit on top of that, and I think he's a guy that could be a role player pretty quickly uh, despite being looked at as a mid to late second round pick g montero 53 to boston i think they need maybe a little bit more point guard depth joe montero's a, a hard player to figure out he played for the overtime elite last year, I don't watch much overtime elite. Um, and even if I did, I don't think I would have a good feel for Gene Montero based off of it. So um, kind of a little bit of a mystery, not a shade and sharp type guy, but it's still a little bit of a mystery. Two forfeited picks, Milwaukee and Miami. Trevor Keels at 54 to Washington. Not a huge fan of his game. Uh, didn't shoot the three ball too well last year defensively. I thought he was a little bit overrated and uh, doesn't have the size to play the three. Um, but 54 is an okay value there. 55, Golden State goes with a draft and stash. Ibu Dianko Baji. Uh, Isaiah Mobley, 56 to Cleveland is a spy I really like, reuniting him with his brother. John Butler, the 7'1", 175-pound big man, super skinny. Like, if you think Chet Holmgren's skinny, you should take a look at John Butler. Hopefully, he can put on muscle, though, because he can shoot the ball. That's kind of intriguing. And then 58, Kai Soto becoming, I think, the first Filipino-born uh, player to get drafted into the NBA would be a cool story for him. Anyway... That is the second round, and that wraps up this mock draft. I think I did pretty well for it just being one recording uh, straight through. Not going to have an outro video on this, so shout out to my channel members. Thank you for your support in the channel. If you want to become a channel member, hit that join button down below, and we'll be live later today with the NBA draft live stream going live an hour before the draft around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hopefully, you can join us. Anyway, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Until next time, as always, peace out. Go Blazers!